everybody, it's Pastor Cree again coming to you with this week's Sunday School Overview. We will be in Lesson 13 this week. Uh, so the Lesson 13, the fish and the bread sign, Jesus feeds the 5,000 from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. So let us begin with God's Word. After this, Jesus went away to the outer side of the Sea of Galilee, to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes thin and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said to this he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered to him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but that, but what they are about, but what they are, sorry, let me start over. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? And Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the man sat down. So the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, "Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost." So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who ate them. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. Perceiving them, then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountainside by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, in this week's lesson, we see uh, the recounting of uh, the feeding of the 5,000. And so when we look to the law gospel aspect of this lesson, we can see in the law, our faith is weak. We fail to trust in God to give us what we need. We often lament and worry and stress needlessly over material things that we think we need, or even the things that we actually do need, such as food, um, and we worry and worry. But God daily provides these things for us. Um, we want to put our trust in ourselves and other things and other people, other than God, to deliver these things for us. But the gospel is, for the sake of Jesus, God promises to provide for all of our earthly and spiritual needs. So God does provide for us everything that we need, and we need not ever worry that 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 somehow um, you know God will abandon us. Now, that doesn't mean that we might not suffer, that famine and, and, and hunger and, and these types of things and homelessness are a real thing that exists in our world. Uh, but God does promise to look after his people and to he promises to deliver them uh, from, from this veil of tears that we are in. And so when we look to the Bible truth, our God Jesus provides for us. And more than anything that we need, more than food and shelter, water, all of those things, more than air itself, is Christ. We need Jesus. And he provided us that salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. And so we have that now. As far as a memory verse goes for this week, 1 Timothy 6, 17, God richly provides us with everything. And so that's a good one for them to, re to remind themselves that God is there for them always. And they need not, they need not worry uh, about all of the different uh, things that, that adults often worry about as far as food and shelter and providing. Uh, that God has God has provided the, our students' parents to provide for them, and that's one way in which He does provide this daily bread for us. And so that's uh, how we look to our our confirmation and catechism connection. Uh, we can look now. You can see on the screen the fourth petition. And so we look at that. It says, "Give us this day our daily bread." What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily prayer, our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? 
Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. And so when we look to the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, uh, we understand uh, that, that God provides that daily bread is, is so much more than just that 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 physical nourishment that we need in in the bread, but everything to support that, to bring that to us, um, our parents, our government, our our, our self control, everything that we have, uh, God provides for us so that we can, uh, th so that He can sustain us, so that we can have a life that is rich and full of His grace. And so when we look at this account, remember that it's, you know a crowd of at least five thousand men plus women and children had gathered to hear Jesus preach. And when challenged to find a way to feed the hungry crowd, the disciples questioned how this was even possible, which we often do. We question God to be able to do. We think things might be impossible for him, but we know with God everything is possible. But Andrew brings one boy's lunch, so five barley loaves and two fish, and miraculously they multiplied this, this meager meal. And Jesus feeds all of those that are there and feeds them in abundance. That These 12 baskets are left over even after they have, have finished with all of it. And so we understand in our identity and our calling in this lesson that God provides for all that we need, that he shows us how to serve others with the gifts that he gives as well, and that we are a steward of God's gifts, using the time, the talents, the treasures that he has given us to serve in the place places that he has called us to be. And so we should never forget that. Um, and so when the, as far as what, what, what I'd like the kids to know when, when, when the kids leave this lesson on, on Sunday, early childhood to know that Jesus gives them what they need, and that they need not worry that Jesus provides everything for them. Uh, the older kids understand that our Lord Jesus provides us uh, with everything, provides uh, us every day for us, and, and that we can share the confidence that God has provided all that we need for this life and the next. And they also be able to identify and thank God for the different ways he provides for us in, in all the various vocations uh, that, that are out there that we will find ourselves in as well. So I hope this uh, short little uh, overview helps you this week as you prepare for this for this lesson, lesson 13. Remember, we only have one more lesson after this, and then we'll start our new unit, unit three. Um, but uh, until then, we'll continue on with this one. So I look forward to seeing all of you. Hopefully, I'll see you this week or this this Wednesday at our meal in our Advent midweek Advent service. Um, and of course, on Sunday for uh, Sunday worship as we have divine service and receive those the body and blood of our, our Lord and Savior as he provides for us that that meal that is that is so valuable and does so much for us. And so thank you. And uh, we will see you uh, on Wednesday and on Sunday. Have a blessed day.